Hello, I'm Mike Thomas. Today we are going to uh, build a Dell server, a Power Edge T310 um, server. We're going to have, um, we're going to install the motherboards, connect uh, CD-ROM drive. We're going to uh, put two hard drives in it that will mirror each other, uh, mount um, the CPU and the heatsink with it and we're gonna go through this instructional video on how to put it together. So uh, stick with us and uh, we should have it together fairly quickly. Okay, so here we have the chassis for the uh, PowerEdge T310 uh, server from Dell and the motherboard. We're gonna install the CPU unit and its heat sink. Uh, we have memory banks here um, we have expansion slots PCMCIA slots uh, the controller everything seems to be on board uh, PC power 12 volt uh, on this integrated motherboard that we have right here so we are going to go ahead and get started so we are going to carefully slide this in we're wearing protective rubber gloves uh, there are, our, um, keeping our A-plus certification in mind, we are going to put this, slide it right in here, moving around some of the cables. We want to make sure that we're not going to, we're going to have access to all of our cables. Uh -huh. So, we seated the motherboard, and we are putting in all of its components. I'm going to screw in the motherboard really fast. Make sure we have it locked in and that it's not moving. I'm going to torque it like I do in a car because this way I don't want to start getting all of these. I normally screw in the screws about 90% and then tighten them all in. This way if any of them are misaligned um, you're not going to have a problem with the board itself. So that's what I'm doing now. Oop, here we go. This way we can still move the board, slide the board a little bit to get it in line with the holes. Screwing those in there. Seems to be about seven. Seven screws should do it. And our last right here by the power supply, an IDE controller. So now I'm going to go ahead and tighten them up the rest of the way, seeing first checking to make sure everything is aligned. Um, it has an onboard network card on it as well. So now what we are going to do is I'm going to start off with the microprocessor for this particular uh, server. And we're going to just carefully place it into place. Make sure it's aligned. All the prongs are touching. And then we are simply going to lock the CPU. So we are locking it right underneath the CPU right there and that's secured and locked in. Next, we're going to put in our heat sink to keep our processor nice and cool. I'm going to go ahead and line it up here with the CPU. And we're going to tighten it down. Of course, I kind of like torquing it like a car, therefore getting some of it started before tightening those screws down all the way. It works for me, I've been doing that for years and I don't know if you have any better ideas please comment below. And so there we are. Okay, we have our processor in our CPU central processing unit and our heat sink and I am going to go to our next step 
I think what I'm going to go ahead and do is just add in the CD-ROM drive. Here we are. Um, data storage. We're going to slide this in back here. We're going to pull back right on this, this edge. Slide it in. And here it's seated. Perfect in the place. We're gonna... Let's go ahead and connect the power to it and the uh, 12 volt amperage to the board. Then we're going to install our drive. We have two Western digital drives, half of, half of uh, gigabyte drives, and we're going to go ahead and seat them in. Locking them into place here. There we go. Make sure we get them in correctly. And let's see, this is our hard drive one. We're going to connect the control. We're going to connect the data ribbon to it. This is our drive three. We're going to connect the data ribbon to it. And then, of course, I have them labeled here to make it a lot easier for me to work with. Uh, this is the actual, I don't know if you can see it very well, but here we have the power um, for, the, for the controller. We're going to go ahead and connect that to its proper uh, plug. And we are going to start with... A and let's see our B over here. I'm not sure if you can get a good view of that, but I will go ahead and show you as soon as I plug them in. Be careful not to ha uh, force these cables in here. I have them labeled A and C right here, uh, B and D right here, and we are connected. So we have the power to the board, we have the connection to the hard drive, and we are continuing to build this computer. Here is the ribbon, the data ribbon for the actual board itself. We're going to go ahead and connect that. And we have... the drive connectors for <clears throat> for the CD-ROM and the power to the CD-ROM. So, and keep the unit cool. We're going to put that in there, but we're done with all of the major components here. We're going to line up the, the fan here and see us into place right here. Yep, there we go. And pops right into place. And of course we're going to connect the power to the fan. To make sure that we're going to get nice and cool air. And that is the basic configuration of this particular server. It's the Dell. We have some protective coverings for it. The front, Dell, Power Edge, T310. Our server is complete. Pops right up to the front right here. Make sure everything is aligned. Bottom goes in first. And that is it, ladies and gentlemen. That is the Dell Power Edge T3100. Um, all of the components are on board. We have the monitor, we have a uh, printer, um, we have a gigab gigabyte ethernet, um, USB cables. Of course, the power cable goes here. 
uh, expansion slots, PCMCIA slots, and we have ourselves a system. Of course, we can always put the cover on it to complete it. And we here we are. You have just built the server. We just built the server. Uh, pretty easy to put together. Uh, hardware components were all integrated on the motherboard. Uh, we can always disable motherboard features by uh, placing jumpers in a different sequence. Of course, look at the owner's manual. And we can add other components by disabling the onboard and putting new components in it. If you are looking to, if you're a gamer, uh, I would suggest going with a video card. It takes a lot of, it takes a lot of bandwidth off of the processor, off the main CPU as it processes internal video information. So if you have a lot of graphics and you're dealing with a lot of AutoCAD or things like that, I highly recommend uh, a great video card. Of course, they change from time to time. Um, I used to use the Viper card, but you know there are some other great cards out there um, with memory on board of that card. If you have any questions or any comments below, please subscribe, ring the bell for notifications, and let me know if you have any questions about building a Dell server. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Hope I didn't seem too nervous on my first uh, tech video. Uh, please comment below, subscribe to the channel, and have a wonderful day.